Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, I'm in Libby's office watching uh, what she promises me is a very cool find. One of our volunteers recently digitized for us three VHSs we had sitting around that we didn't have players for. Uh, these were just found in the collection space. We're wondering what they were. Uh, so he took them home and he brought them back and he said, these are absolutely amazing. There just aren't enough hours in the day. So until now, I haven't watched them. Uh, but Libby's watched about a half hour out of this several hour long set. And uh, she says that it's amazing. I need to watch it. And it's worth filming a React video as I watch this footage. So um, what I am told we're looking at, and hopefully we'll be able to confirm this from the footage we're actually watching, is that this is uh, official government footage, um, although it's like somebody walking around with a camcorder type deal, from 1999 of guys at the Bremerton uh, mothball fleet going through New Jersey prior to her being turned over to the state to be used as a museum. So this is supposed to be something of a catalog or an inventory of what the ship looks like following eight years in mothballs and prior to the work started on her as a museum. So it's going to be uh, very interesting for me seeing what was intact, what was missing. We're gonna be able to figure out like, what sort of work was done by the museum over the last 20 some odd years. It's gonna be very interesting to see what the condition of the vessel is after being basically left in Bremerton for eight years. Uh, so this is the first in a series of videos. If it is several hours long, we're probably only gonna do, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of this um, because I've got to get back to my job and then uh, we'll pick it up next week and we'll just do this as a recurring thing for the next couple of weeks until we've made it through all uh, of the videos. I'm not quite sure how long it is. It might be something like four hours of total content. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited to see the ship. The thought at this point from people who have watched parts of it is that they're going to go into just about every single room on the ship and inventory it. So I'm, I'm real excited to see. Let's see what we've got. Great stop it. So when the screen goes black, that is me cutting it. So. All right, so here we are in a head. Looks like the Blair Witch Project. Uh, I can only tell it's a head from the tile deck. Okay, so this is the head up forward in the former Marine Corps birthing space uh, right around turret one on the starboard side. Uh, this particular head was uh, converted into a laundry room. It's interesting, there's a ton of dehumidification hoses in there that aren't attached to their machines. Uh, I'm not sure if there were extras or if the machines were taken apart. Um, but basically in this head, they just cut away shower stalls and put in mounting brackets for regular civilian washers and dryers because when they allowed you to bring uh, civilian clothes on board. They did not allow you to use the ship's laundry room to wash them. All right, here is one of the main deck state rooms. The uh, main deck staterooms were modernized with the folding couch and bed that, uh, and some slightly more modern equipment than today. And it's glad to, it's good to see that uh, our videos aren't the worst produced videos out there. Holy cow. Uh, notice drawers are zip tied shut so that as the ship is moved, things don't fly open. Uh, so this might be showing work that they have done prior to the ship being towed here, or this might have just been like this in mothballs. It's hard to say. 
I would think in mothballs you'd want drawers open to help air out the inside of these things and not tied shut. <sighs> Get used to the color gray, folks. These extreme close-ups of the paint coating are showing that they're in pretty good shape. Uh, so that bodes well for the preservation work done. Uh, speaking of preservation work, you might be able to hear the hammering in the overhead. That is uh, the maintenance guys working on the deck. More staterooms. It's interesting, there's a mix match of tanker chairs in these rooms. Uh, that is what we see today, and it kind of drives me crazy because I'm like, oh, we've got all these blue chairs, all these green chairs, why aren't they matched up? It, it looks like they're just uh, whatever was in the room. I don't know if that's the two officers sharing it. Don't swap chairs or something, or it's just an organic thing over the years. Notice there's an asbestos sticker in every room, even though that's not an issue. This is the uh, male officer's head on the main deck uh, forward center line. Oh, they removed the commodes. That's interesting. Yeah, so this is probably the engineering officer's stateroom on the main deck uh, port side. Notice that there are lights out around the ship. The Navy only maintains about a quarter of the lighting on mothballed ships. Just enough so you can sort of see your way around. It, look at all the equipment that's still in the repair lockers. They really did leave the ship uh, relatively intact. Battleship New Jersey is very fortunate that uh, we've got so much of this equipment that other ships don't. It, it's kind of interesting that more of this stuff on the main deck that's very accessible hasn't been stripped off by other ships that need parts. I would expect to see more things as you go deeper in the ship, but at the main entrance in the wardroom uh, to see most of that stuff stripped away. Again, these are just the staterooms on the main deck forward of the wardroom. Nothing too different there. I'm, I'm really impressed with the, with the coatings I'm seeing here. It seems like the ship is pretty well preserved. So when people ask me why we don't have every room on the ship open, it's because of this. I, how many officer staterooms do you want to see on your tour of the ship? Oh, look, here's another one. Oh, that's cool. The, the chairs are actually wired to the mattress, or I guess that's a box spring. Yeah, there's no asbestos in the security force locker. Why did they put those damn stickers in every space? Yeah, this, I don't think this person is actually stepped in. I think they're just looking through the window. I think this room is still locked. No, the door would be open for dehumidification. So they're, they're probably just standing in the doorway. Mm. Yeah. Okay, here's the officer's lounge. I wonder where that bookshelf went. Oh, interesting that those lamps were on the ship. Uh, presumably this is the XO's cabin. Oh, very interesting. There's a sitting room outside the XO's cabin. 
Okay, so we're looking into the wardroom now. A lot of deck equipment was just stowed in here when the ship was uh, put into mothballs. These all look like uh, support structures for the uh, ship's accommodation ladders. The uh, ladders that hang off the side of the ship when you're bringing a boat alongside or when you're near a pier. I don't recognize a lot of this equipment specifically, so I'm not sure where it all ended up. That's an unrep uh, tripod. Yeah, here are the accommodation ladders. Oh. The ship had her two accommodation ladders here in the wardroom. Uh, the museum somehow lost or got rid of them at some point because we no longer have them. Those exterior main deck brackets are completely empty. I'm so jealous of Wisconsin because they still have theirs. Uh, notice that there are not enough tanker chairs for all the tables. We found that we don't have the full set of blue tanker chairs for the wardroom, um, and there's always been speculation as to where they went. But uh, here you can see that they do not have them. Maybe another ship did come in and take those, or maybe with the number of officers they just didn't have enough chairs for tables. These tables have leafs in them and can be broken down to smaller size. Uh, although it seems like they are being showed at their uh, full size, so that probably indicates that's how they were used at the end of the ship's career. Uh, which means that there's just an insufficient number of chairs for reasons I don't know. Here is the accommodation brow again. Again, the uh, museum misplaced this and it is lost to history. Not that we would use it, but it is an empty rack that we could have filled. I absolutely hate empty racks. One day we'll have everything filled as if this ship was still active. Man, it's too bad in 1999 we didn't invent a wide-angle lens. Interesting that the uh, there was an ice cream machine in the wardroom. That is no longer there. No idea what happened to it. Uh, the ice machine broke and was replaced with a museum added one in the same location that we still use for events. Not quite sure what all this stuff is. I'm getting a little bit seasick. The ice cream machine is from the 1980s, but Taylor has been making ice cream machines for the military since at least World War II. It's interesting that these chairs are not wired down in any way like the ones in the staterooms. Okay, this is the Exo's head, which has uh, since been completely modified. The shower stall has been removed uh, to make it a handicap accessible bathroom. So the, the original door has been cut away and widened for a wheelchair. And uh, there's been grab bars installed, the shower removed, so there's plenty of room. Uh, otherwise, things in the Exo's cabin don't look too different from how we display them today, except, of course, we've added lamps and pictures on the wall and other things to make the space seem more lived in. You'll notice that the battle port covers are all closed as part of the mothballing process. Any of the portholes you see, there's a good one right there. Uh, this is to keep UV sunlight from coming in and heating up the inside of the ship, which is being climate controlled, or to keep that uh, UV light from deteriorating the inside of the ship. And you can see it's, it's working. The carpet seems uh, pretty well intact. The, the fabrics haven't faded out because of the sunlight. The Exo's sitting room is pretty empty. We've since added a lot of stuff in there. Ooh, you guys shouldn't look at that. I think that's the female bathroom, right in front of the wardroom. Uh, 
despite not having any female crew ever on board the ship, she always had a guest bathroom for women in the uh, wardroom area. Okay, this is a deck force locker um, right near the uh, female wardroom, or right near the female head in the wardroom. You can see all the uh, rifle racks and things. This is for the ship's company as opposed to where the Marines would store their equipment. Uh, so if there was some sort of issue and you needed uh, to arm the ship's company, those racks were for M16s, and there's probably 1911 racks or uh, maybe Breda M9s by the end of the ship's career. There's one of the main deck passageways leading aft from the wardroom. Excuse me, that's leading forward from the wardroom. Those are used as office spaces on board today. This is going athwart ships from passageway to passageway forward to the wardroom. This is another one of those passageways. Now we're heading aft towards the wardroom, turning right towards the decontamination locker. This is the base of the conning tower to the left where air handlers are for the air conditioning to the forward officers spaces. So uh, that is our first edition of uh, watching through this survey of the ship's condition. Um, so far, things appear to be relatively intact and in good uh, condition more so than I was expecting to find. We've seen some equipment that's gone missing and some equipment that explains uh, why we've got such complete fittings in some of those spaces. And uh, we've seen one of the reasons why every room on the ship is not open uh, because there's just a lot of repetition in those officer staterooms. Most of those officer staterooms you saw today are staff offices. Um, so, in the future, we're going to keep watching these videos. There's a good chance that we'll end up going through every compartment on the ship. So stick with us. We'll probably release one of these every week, which will be my first reaction watching these. I'm excited to see when we get into some different compartments and, and uh, get to see some variety. Uh, so remember to like, share, and subscribe so that you get notified when we put out more videos like this. This is going to be a real interesting condition report to 1999, a baseline survey of what the ship looked like when the museum got it. Which space are you most interested to see in the future? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, and also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support so far. If you'd like to continue to donate to help us out, there's a link in the description below. Another way to support us is by liking, sharing, and subscribing. That way more people find out about our channel and our museum. Thanks for watching.